Guy's just come along with his two dogs. Walked around the pier, right through the sand, footprints everywhere. It wasn't me. I'm just on my way to the old St Anne's Pier and my timing isn't exactly perfect this morning. The plan was to come to the old pier and get it just as the tide had left the old structure to leave some beautiful wet sand behind and get the sunrise reflected in all that wet sand. And I've not been here before and really checked out exactly where the water is at the point where it leaves the old pier. So what I did, I checked the weather last night and I checked the tide times and the sunrise was half an hour before high tide. So the general idea was that that half an hour between high tide and sunrise would give the water sufficient time to leave the pier and uh, just leave the sand all wet. But um, it's looking like it's gonna be more like a nine meter tide because I've just got here now and the tide is probably about half a mile further out beyond the pier. Just spin that round and show you. So there's the old pier, and the water's literally nowhere to be seen. But it's one of those things, um, when you come to a place for the first time, you can't always get it bang on right. And this morning really was about a recce, but the weather forecast was pretty good, so I thought it might just, might just all come together. But I'm here now, and I'm, I'm gonna give it a go anyway, because the clouds above me are, um, it's like a thin layer of, um, of, of cloud basically but the clear the horizon is beautifully clear and I think it's going to be quite a show so I'm going to set up anyway we've not got the wet sand but I think it's going to be a beautiful sunrise and this structure in itself is very appealing and um, it looks like no one's walked in any of the sand since the, the well since the tide was up last so I'm going to set up and give it a go Just behind me to my right, the clouds are setting on fire. It's just amazing. So I've got to be really conscious where I'm standing now, when the sun does come up, I'm going to cast some really long shadows on the sand. But initially, before the sun comes up, when these clouds colour, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to start, start the session on this side and maybe move to the other side of the pier when the sun's come up and get the nice warm light of the morning on the structure itself. But for now, for me, I think this is the place. I'd like to go on the other side where I can really shoot towards where that fiery red is, but the problem with that is I've got um, the Fleetwood, sorry, not the Fleetwood, the St. Anne's foreshore in the background. So I think I'm gonna stay here and just wait for these clouds to, uh, to underlight, which they will do eventually. Quite exciting stuff really. I've got the filters set up, um, camera all set up, 16 to 35 mil lens on, and I'm pretty much ready to go. There's just some colour showing in the sky now, um, but behind me it's just staggering, absolutely staggering. Um, I've not put any filters on just yet because looking at the scene, it's fairly well balanced. The sky um, is sort of a neutral grey and the sand is very, very neutral brown as well. So I, there's going to be no filtration to begin with. Um, I really don't see it's necessary. I can just see the warmth now creeping onto the, the old wooden legs. It's a beautiful, beautiful image. It really is. The question is, do I go in wide or do I go in long? Need to sort out the composition quickly though, because when it happens, it happens also very, very quickly. Wide always looks good, <laughs> no matter where you are. Wide always looks really, really appealing. I think I might go a bit wider, but going closer just to give the structure a bit more impact. So what I've done is I've come in a bit wider. It's just setting on fire that sky. I've come in a bit wider, um, but I've, what I've actually done is I've got pretty much the, the structures the same size in the frame, but by going wider, um, 
I'm able to tilt the camera back and distort the, the perspective of the structure which really gives it a lot of impact and it simply does look superb. I've got it running on a, on a diagonal away from the camera so I've got um, there's this metal um, structure at the front and one at the back with two balls on either end and I'm using the one on the left as my lead-in that takes you to um, the second iron structure at the back there um, as my, my, my way out of, of the image. So I'm just about ready to take the shot. I've been really, really patient. The light's gone quite orange there now and the pinks are probably at the most intense they will be um, for this side. Like I say, I've got the pier at a nice 45 degree angle. The horizon on the shot is uh, on, the, on the bottom third. In terms of settings, I've got f16 just to give me enough depth of field i want about half a second exposure and i've actually decided in the end to put um, a 0.3 neutral density filter as the sky is becoming a little bit brighter now i'm finding that there's a little bit of imbalance between the sky and the sand so i've just bobbed that on just to even it out and it looks absolutely beautiful so i'm going to take that shot now i think we're ready to go so yeah iso 100 two second timer mirror lock up that's stunning absolutely stunning I took a couple of test shots before without the filter and there's a definite difference there's much more luminosity in the sand now that wasn't there a few minutes ago so yeah all in all really happy with that it actually looks oddly like I could be in Namibia the way that the sand has blown and smoothed out across the surfaces there it just looks like wind-blown dunes and I think in hindsight, the sun and the wet water, whilst that would have been a nice image, I think the subdued softness of the sand and the subtleties of the pinks in the sky really, really lend themselves to this particular shot. So I'm not that bothered, if I'm honest, um, in the end, about having the wet sand. I think this in itself is a beautiful image. Now the sun is just starting to peep up now over the horizon and I need to start thinking about whether I can get a shot from the other side. I need to move from here because um, I'm just going to get long shadows. I will quickly, however, just put this on live view and let you see the image. Um, I'll actually show the final images at the end of the video. Um, maybe the one with the sun uh, with the sun up and one with the sun down so you can see the, the comparisons between the two. But I'll just pop this on live view now and talk you through the composition. So there we have the scene. Like I say, with the 0.3 neutral density grad on, if I just lift that up, you'll see the sand goes quite muddy. Um, whereas when I slide it down, you just get it down to there, you see that the, the sand has got a bit more luminosity about it now. Like I said, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous image. It really is. That structure is so perfect um, as a landscape shot. But um, talking through the actual composition itself, now we've, we've lost a little bit of the top and bottom because of the crop of, of, the, um, of the video format. Um, there is a little bit more be, be, be below the, uh, the stanchion legs that you can, just can't see in this, this uh, particular scene. But um, as you can see, I've got the, the actual pier itself angled at 45 degrees away from the camera. And uh, what I'm using as my anchor point is the, the iron structure with the ball on top as my immediate foreground that leads your eye um, to and beyond um, the ball at the far distance and it's a very very simple scene but it's heavily dependent on on, on light um, light intensity to, to really lift it if you come back here any other time of day and it, it really does look quite flat but the fact that we've got all this lovely lovely old wood really helps it and I think when the Sun gets on on this and we're shooting maybe from over there looking that direction I think it'll look amazing so I'm going to get into position now um, as quickly as I can before it's too late got to work so quickly at this time of day it really have the Sun's already completely cleared the horizon line so it's crucial that I get into position fast get the camera lined up and knowing your equipment is so important um, this time of day you've really got to be able to do everything second nature now I have been very very careful not to tread on the uh, on the smooth sand I really don't want to show any footprints 
So you've got to have that in mind. And again, that's a really nice composition. I desperately don't want to stand in the sand in front, but on the same score, I want to go in close to see how it looks um, up close with a 16 mil on. Um, but I don't do it. I just don't do it in case I ruin it. And then, you know, I might just get there and think, no, it was definitely better further back. So I'm left with a bit of a predicament. Um, so I think I'm going to stay out here. I'm going to risk it and go with what I've got. The thing is, from this point of view, I haven't got the sun at all in the image. And I, I did think that I might be able to fit it in. Um, moving around here. It's fine, I can get the sun in, but I'm not sure about the composition of the structure. There seems to be quite a lot of negative space. I've just got to keep moving around and tweaking the composition until I get what I'm happy with. This is ridiculous. They say landscape photography can be really relaxing, but I'm finding it quite frantic this morning. I've got a beautiful sun coming up and I want to get a starburst. I think I found my composition. Um, and I've racked the, the, uh, the aperture to f22 to give me the maximum effect of the starburst. The small apertures really help that. Um, eighth of a second, 100 ISO, I've still got the 0.3 um, Lee just, just on the top, just angle slightly where the sun is, just to give me that little bit of um, more mood to the sky and bring it down that extra one stop. I've got a lovely smoothness to the sand in front of me. Um, it's, honestly, it just looks like you've done it with a trowel. It looks like a plaster has been in and smoothed it out. Two second timer, 100 ISO, mirror lock up, and away we go. Gorgeous, gorgeous starburst. I actually think this is better than the other side. Both equally beautiful, nice pictures, but the light just then, straight away it's gone. It's just gone, it's just, just tipped inside that um, the cloud as it's going up and we've lost it and that's why I mean it's uh, often landscape photography you know it's we say it's relaxing and we we have all these lovely calm feelings about when we're working but the reality sometimes is quite the opposite and I literally had just minutes maybe not even minutes maybe seconds to get that shot and the light is ever so flat now it's gone remarkable Crikey, that was intense. That was really intense. I hope I've got some beautiful images. They certainly look belting on the back of the camera. I won't know for sure until I get them back on the Mac, but you guys are going to see them now. Um, hope you like them. Um, the video feels like it's gone by like that. It's been really, really quick, uh, but I think it's just the excitement. I just, <laughs> just all got a bit too much for me, I think, just running around trying to find the right shots and the right positions, plus doing the, uh, doing the talking to the video it's uh, it's quite frantic to say the least so anyway i hope you've enjoyed it leave some comments let me know what you think of the shots subscribe ring the bell for notifications and i'll see you all again next time bye for now